It's been a good few weeks since the game Power World took the internet by storm, including the expected Pokemon clone claims that come with every new release in the monster taming genre, this game saw many discussions erupting online, such as largely unproven accusations of the developers using AI to animal rights activists campaigning for the welfare of ones and zeros. And then of course the fact that it's constantly breaking uh, sales records. Currently on Steam it's sitting at 12 million as of the latest announcement, but today we'll be going through my experiences with the game so far, specifically on the Steam Deck. And over the past few weeks I've uploaded a few Power World videos to test the waters, and a search term that is frequently used to find my videos, most notably the shorts, is Power World Steam Deck or Steam Deck Power World. So I can't remember which way around, but anyway, there appears to be a good number of you who want to see how well it performs before diving in yourselves, so I figured why not do a video on exactly that. So let's get into the meat and potatoes of the video, shall we? So far, about 13 hours into Power World, I've had about four crashes so far, and each one of these crashes I experienced while I had OBS running on a second screen on the Steam Deck alongside a webcam, microphone, and green screen. Needless to say that under these conditions, the deck is doing a lot more work than just on the game itself. And those crashes, they happened whilst flying around or loading a dungeon. However, when I've played the game without any of that, just in handheld mode or docked, the game has been incredibly stable. Okay, yes, I have the graphics settings dialed most of the way down to get that consistent 30 frames per second. But, of course, with every patch, the recommended settings for the Steam Deck will likely change, and they may even improve. But keeping the resolution at that native handheld resolution and lowering most of the settings to low with the exception of one or two should grant you a stable 30 frames per second. So the settings I have been using in handheld mode should be up on screen right now. I'll keep it up ever so briefly. Now, the background footage that you've been seeing throughout this video is captured in handheld mode with Decky Recorder running in the background, nibbling away at a little bit of the deck's performance, just a little bit. And granted, the image you're seeing has been stretched and sharpened just a little bit for YouTube's sake, just so that we don't have black borders all the way around this video. Now, above the gameplay footage, we have also the various real-time performance statistics for those that find it helpful. You'll notice that throughout the game, for the most part, it sits at around 30 frames per second. Occasionally, it'll jump a little bit down and then back up again to 31, as we've just seen it struggled a little bit briefly loading this menu and landed on 22 but for the most part we're keeping around 30 frames per se second and while we're talking about graphics on the low settings that i've been playing the game on i'd say they're incredibly decent many games when come across as near unplayable when lowering the graphic settings due to, due to the consistent lack of an art style whereby the games rely exclusively on high resolution textures Power World, however, it has more in common with Pokemon Legends Arceus and Zelda Breath of the Wild as far as the art style is concerned, which are on the Nintendo Switch, which is a much less powerful piece of kit. So yes, the game looks much better when watching other people's gameplay videos on YouTube, whereby they can support higher graphic settings, but they certainly aren't off-putting me on playing on the Steam Deck. And Speaking of higher graphic settings, if you're an Xbox Game Pass subscriber, the odds are you're already playing this game on those much higher settings on your Steam Deck, thanks to it being a streaming service and it taking the heavy lifting off of you. But if you are, in fact, playing Power World in handheld mode, what about the game's power consumption? Well, it certainly is one of those games that you might want to keep close by to a power outlet if you push the settings any higher than what we're seeing right here. Uh, as it stands at the moment, I've been able to squeeze between 90, and two, uh, 90 minutes and 2 hours out of this game with the graphic settings that I showed you earlier and the deck's own built-in options limiting it to 30 frames per second. As the game gets more optimised over time, this might even stretch past 2 hours. As for my thoughts on Power World itself as a game, well, I can certainly see its appeal. 
as it manages to pull me in for a couple of hours per week on average to play around, explore and work on base building. But as with all open world base building sandbox games, I often lack the motivation to boot up the game as I often prefer a more handcrafted story. But don't get me wrong, I do love this game and when more story elements are introduced into the game, it'll definitely be my cup of tea. As to whether or not I'll be doing more Power World related videos in the future, um, yeah, I, I will most likely be doing more Power World related videos in the future. At the moment, the space on YouTube is a bit saturated with videos and simple gameplay videos on smaller channels like mine really struggle to stand out, so I'm kind of taking a step back from doing those and I'll be experimenting on Power World itself to see what exciting or informative content I can bring to the channel. Um, yeah, especially in this really competitive space. In the meantime, if you do want me to do Power World videos on the Steam Deck, let me know in the comments section below what you'd like to see me uh, do, and until then, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on that particular upload. Until then, play casual.